Well, hello everybody. Welcome to another episode of the Content Creators University. You guys know I am your humble servant, JP. For the folks that do not know me, allow me to introduce myself. I am a cinematographer, software developer, and branding expert. What I do is help people establish a brand that can really impact, right? I help you make an impact through high quality visuals, whether it's cinematography, uh, web design, graphic design, photography, or you name it. There's a way to do it. And like I always say, the way you promote and market yourself in this new generation we're living in post quote unquote pandemic is different from the way you used to do it before in order to convert people. Every single week, we have a show here called the Content Creators University that we're in today. And we have one of the best minds in the content creation ecosystem. We call them professors, right? And today we have not one professor, but two. I call them the power duo. And they're here to talk to us about live engagement, right? One thing is to go live. Another thing is to know how to engage with your audience. Retention is what's going to allow you to grow your audience base, right? Grow your following, which is crucial for content creators. Well, we're about to talk about that. What are the things to consider when it comes down to growing your audience? How should you connect with your following, right? Whenever you're live, there's certain things that you need to pay attention to. Or what are the things that you may consider adding to your production that can increase the value, right? Increase the experience. Well, let's talk about it. So many things that we need to think about, which is crucial um, if you create any type of content. And you guys know, um, we talked about that before. Who is the creator, right? A creator is anybody that's bringing something to existence. So if you're bringing something to existence, then you are a creator. And this is something you need to think about. Very important, folks. Very, very important. Earlier, I know you saw the ads of our sponsors, Charles Jackson Media. Thank you for being a sponsor of the Content Careers University. For those of you who do not know, this show is both sponsored and listener supported, right? So it's because of you guys that we keep doing this show and want to appreciate it. Thank you guys for that. I always say the day you stop learning, you stop growing. This show is to help you keep learning you know technology there's something new every single time there's a new update talking about update there's a 3.9 update of the best softwares in the world i'm gonna let you guess for the folks that are listening and wondering what is jp talking about i'll i'll say it later in the show for the folks i know shout out to you guys all right i'm glad that you went ahead and hit your update but again that's the thing right we need to be rooted to shows like this that is going to give us that information and tell us the things that we need to know in order to improve our offering right our production value very very crucial right that's what we hear so shout out to charles jackson media if you're looking to build your studio a professional way, wondering the lighting, the setup, the microphone, the lenses, and different things like that, go ahead and visit the website, charlesjackson.media, fantastic company. And also protect yourself, right? I know you saw ExpressVPN. Go ahead and get yourself three months of ExpressVPN. Just go to expressvpn.com forward slash JP Hat Tech. For the folks that are listening, it's JP H I G H T E K. Get yourself three months and see. I personally use it and I love it, especially now that most people are working from home. We need to protect our investment and know, and make sure that nothing is at risk, right, of being leaked to the web or anything like that. So go ahead and check that out if you appreciate it. Now, the folks that we're about to bring on the on the stage, like I said, they're a power duo. Before we talk about them, let me go ahead and run this ad and we'll be right back. Don't go anywhere. Stay with me. Yo, 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 it's your boy, Jay Dunn. Look, you are on Content Creator University. You finally made it. It's live right now. So stay right here because it's about to be crazy. Let's go. RTN Stream. So the folks that are wondering what RTN Stream says, well, I always say it's your best companion to your Ecamm. You guys know I am broadcasting this show right now. Ecamm is my encoder. 
Well, RT in Streams is the best companion of Ecamm. What does that mean? Well, RT in Streams is your decoder, right? Talking about decoder, well, I'm using RT in Streams to do things like this. As you can see, right now I am on my Roku TV application, and this is my Roku TV application for the folks that are watching the video. And folks, if you didn't know that, go ahead and download my Roku TV application. The name is JP High Tech TV. Download it, it's 100% free. Go ahead, click on it, enjoy, and watch every single episode that we release on Roku. And I'm using RT and Streams to do this type of things, right? It's RT and Streams that's allowing me. This show that we're on right now is also live on your Roku. So if you're home, you can go ahead and turn it on, install it, and watch us live on your Roku. Grab some popcorn and relax. The conversation we're about to have today is phenomenal, right? So this is what is allowing me to do that, right? RT and Streams is allowing me to, to decode or right, the stream from Ecamm and to do things like this. Embed it to my website and have it across the board, even multi multicasting simulcasting is also available with this software fantastic stuff that i personally love folks so now we're about to talk about who is there that we're about to bring onto the stage here like i was saying data power duo instead of me presenting them to you let me just bring them over here <laughs> hello there welcome to the hello. show family hello. hello hello well yeah thank you it's so oh, great to be pleasure. here. Yes. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Well, um, I am so excited. First of all, I want to thank you guys. And today we have, for the price of one, we have two professors. <laughs> we have two of you guys that are about to teach us about things that we care about or want to know when it comes out to live audience engagement. Before we even talk about any of that, I want to ask both of you guys, starting from Fulgence, take a minute, introduce yourself to our folks here so we can learn more about who you are and your background. Absolutely, absolutely. So um, thank you for inviting us on the show, JP. It's like, it's great to be here. My background um, before content creation, um, and, you know, I still am uh, nonprofit management, right, with a health and social services agency in Brooklyn. And I've been um, in nonprofit management field for 11 years now. So last year, of course, uh, we we came, we had the pandemic, right? And mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. our nonprofit went completely virtual. All the staff stayed at home. We're on Zoom every single day, you know, trying to, you know, maintain our sanity and everything like that. And prior to that, prior to being on Zoom every day, you would not catch me in front of a camera. Right? <laughs> and I had to do something to like, you know, make sure that we remain, you know, we have bring our programs virtually. And so mm -hmm. I had to, you know, start to learn how to do video production. I, something that I've always, you know, done with my phone and things of that nature, but, you know, I want to take things to the next level. I started, started to do my research and, you know, I started to invest in gear. We also mm -hmm. received uh, um, several grants for uh, due to COVID-19 uh, relief. So I received several grants and I was able right. to acquire a uh, particular gear, cameras, lights, and microphones and things of that nature. And, you know, I really, um, it helped me gain my experience in production. And as I started to do this research, I'm on YouTube researching things, and I came across these content creators who are Team Sony, right? So the YouTube <laughs> algorithm guided me towards Sony. Right. Then the YouTube algorithm guided me towards Ecamm Live, right? And I started using OBS, and mm -hmm. OBS was not for me. And the moment I installed uh, Ecamm Live on April of uh, 2020, I was sold, right? And then I learned about the Ecamm Live uh, community, community. Uh, where, I, where I met Doc and one thing led to another and I met Bradley there and I was just like drawn to these amazing people and I was learning a lot from these people, right? Now, fast forward to December, uh, they started the Vlogmas Challenge where you create videos and content every day for the month of December in the Let's Get Live uh, Facebook group. This mm -hmm. is where I was like able to like really sharpen my skills uh, and, uh, but the thing is like what Vlogmas did for me, Vlogmas inspired me to finally get in front of the camera for, uh, you know, uh, for myself, like to just overcome that fear and get in front of that camera. This mm -hmm. was on December 8th, 2020, right? I went live for the very first time. I just wanted to share the overlays that I was using for my productions for my nonprofit. And I mm -hmm. wanted to share that with the Ecamm live community. I use that as an excuse to go live. <laughs> the very that was <laughs> that was my very first time right the very first time i went live anna was there anna was there in the audience right two days later 
Anna was live, but Anna's been doing her, this her thing. But that's when I was able to see her for the first time. But okay. Vlogmas, Vlogmas really changed my life, you know, and uh, and you know, it's it's been great ever since, you know, in it's regards been to content creation, this content creation journey, it's just been mind blowing. So much has happened, and it's just like a humbling experience. It's a mind blowing experience. It's just amazing, and it's it's just started. Wow. Wow. Fantastic. Thank you for that. I'm excited. Um, your story is just one like so many others, right? I'm going to let Anna go ahead and uh, uh, share with us your background as well, Anna, please. Hello, my name is Anna Hill, and I am actually a photographer, and my genres are um, headshots and events. And I'm also a host and the producer of my show, Officially Unofficial TV, where we talk about relationships and things that are happening in, you know, in, in our personal lives, like finances, uh, relationship with our children, and things like that. So um, aside from that, the way uh, the the way I got into e with ecom is. Uh, it was like everybody pandemic happened. We were we had live interviews, live shows to do, and then we went mm -hmm. all virtual, found Egam Live, and then uh, went into the community, connected with a lot of members, and the rest is history. <laughs> well, I love that. I love that. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Today we're talking about live audience engagement, right? Uh, first of all, we cannot talk about live engagement without actually talking about the production of the live show. You guys have a show that you um, handle, like you just mentioned earlier, it's called Building Blocks, right? So not only you started going live, but you started going live to teach others <laughs> how to master the live production, right? So one thing I wanna ask you is, why did you chose live, right? Because, um, some other people may be like, well, why live? I don't feel comfortable going live. And you talked about Vlogmas earlier, but we want to know what's in live stream for you? What's so special about going live that others may not understand or may be missing out as a company and may should be tapping into? Uh, let us know, Fulgence. Right. And it, it just comes to the point where, you know, especially during Vlogmas and, uh, um, you know, the month of the month of January as well. And for myself, I was like going live all the time, all the time, <laughs> because it's just like something that just helps you become more comfortable and helps you, you know, be remain consistent, right? And how how mm -hmm. building blocks came to be is that you know, uh, Anna was working on some overlays, and you know, we just had this aha moment. It was like, listen, we could design this in Ecamm. We don't have to go do this in Canva, you know. Let's just go in Ecamm. So let's let's meet up in a few minutes and let's work on it, and then we added an animation to the overlays and <laughs> this was just like a breakthrough moment we said you know what <laughs> we must go live right now in the let's get live group and share this with the community right and it's just about you just it's just real time everybody's there with you people mm -hmm, are providing mm -hmm. uh they're suggesting they're like they were just like and then there came a time like where we're designing these things and it was just silence, right? Because like people would just engage. You could tell like the numbers are not dropping. They're just there watching and just and waiting for us to finish the product, right? It's just that that feeling of uh, community, right? They're just there with you, and you know you don't get that from a pre-recorded content, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. True, true, yeah, true, yeah. true. I True. definitely agree with that. Definitely, like for 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 me, the reason uh, going live first of all is a lot of experience, and when uh, people trust you and they trust your platform and they 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 feel it, it is a safe place to ask questions. Then you learn more because the questions that they ask, then you can you can answer it, save it for later, and then address it in a short or something else because we will know that a lot of people are asking the same questions. So when we go live and people ask the same questions over and over again, then we know and that gives us an idea of, okay, the next live should be about this. And this is something that perhaps on pre-recorded content, we will not get it because people will think about it, but they will not actually go ahead and write the comment. Mm -hmm. So those are one of the, like, at least for, you know, that's, that's that great. That is so plus, true, I mean. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So true. Thank you for putting it like that. Yes, absolutely. And uh, even in my personal experience, you know, live, you get some things that happen live. And it's just also the excitement, right? The excitement <laughs> of knowing that this is happening right now. Like literally, right. I can, you know, connect with the host right mm -hmm. now 
the yes. host can call my name right now. <laughs> it, it wasn't planned, right? Live is something. Right. Things that happen live was not planned. You will plan the show, but what exactly the engagement interaction? You can't plan that. You can't right. plan right. somebody asking you a specific question or how it's gonna go. You don't have that, and so there's something special about it personally that mm -hmm. I think is unique to the moment. Right. right? Um, right. It's all about the moment you're in. Now, you guys um, are doing this, and now you chose Ecamm because there are multiple softwares out there. Plenty, right? Mm -hmm. um, why Ecamm? I know you talk about uh, the community um, doing some animation, but you can still do some animations without the softwares. So why is it that Ecamm became the go-to, Anna, tell me a little bit. For me, it was the ease of use. Um, when I first uh, went into in, in April, my son, he's a streamer. I'm like, mm -hmm. oh my gosh, I need a software so that I can uh, broadcast. And he said, try OBS, that's what I use. So he has a, um, a PC and I'm like, okay, does it work for Mac? Yes, okay. All right, so I know that when a, a language, a, a software is written in two different languages, there's some translation that's not gonna work out, especially with Mac. Right. So, but I gave it, right? I gave it a try, and I that thing opened up, and I was like, "What is this thing? Like, what is it?" And he, I'm like, "Can you explain this software to me real quick?" I had a show the next day, right? So imagine mm. that, right? Oh, and wow. he's like just just open scenes and i'm like what are scenes like <laughs> what is this right then i started googling and i'm like is there a software for mac and then hmm. ecamm live came up right and i was like okay i installed ecamm live and let me tell you that right away i knew what everything was what i needed to do and it's like you know when you find your your person for example right you don't have to look anywhere else because you find your person. So Ecom Live was my person. I was like, okay, I don't need to look anywhere else. That's it. That's true. Mm -hmm. That's true. The same. The what same about here, you, right? uh, Fulgens? The same here, and you know, so it's it for me. It was like that process of how do I, you know, not necessarily like leave Zoom altogether because Zoom serves its own purpose, right? But how do I get out of that? Um, relying on zoom for production and taking the production to the next level as opposed to just using this video conferencing platform so i started with the obs and you know it's you know i'm i'm tech savvy so i work my way around it but then when it comes to learning about what you could bring you could use something there's something called a virtual camera where you can bring <laughs> you know this production into zoom and that will help you take things to the next level or bring it into other video conferencing like virtual camera and then I'm on the Mac. I was already on Mac. I'm not using uh, the PC and everything like that. So right. now, you know, just that alone, just that alone to find out that, you know, at that time you had to use third party software and this thing was available for PC only. That just became a major deterrent. But the moment, the moment I found Ecamm Live, the moment I, I came across that YouTube video that told me that this thing exists and I downloaded it, as Anna mentioned it, right away, you just knew that this is it. I was sold take my money right now. Here's my monthly uh, subscription. Virtual camera is already there. I'm, I'm just, I'm ready to roll. I'm ready to roll. You did monthly? I did a year. I did monthly. I, I did I'm, a year. I'm, a, I'm a monthly type of no, guy. I'm like, yo, I'm committed. <laughs> I'm a monthly type of person. No, I'm committed. I went for the year. You went for the month. Take it one month at a time. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty cool. And I like that. I like what you're saying, right? Is It's not about the software per se. It's about how the software can complement your life, right? Mm -hmm. The ease of use is everything because we all have a flow, different flows. And Anna, that was crazy. Like literally the day after you had a show and you had to try a software. That is that is insane, right? It I mean, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> Now, um, <laughs> talking about that, right, for the folks that do not know and listen to the podcast, we're talking about Ecamm Live. Ecamm Live is a streaming software that can allow you to do both live and pre-recorded content and is, as of the recording of this show, only available on Mac. Uh, it's one of the best softwares to do that. And you can also go ahead and get a free trial in the comment section, description of the video and things like that. Um, but let's talk about that because um, do you guys ever use it as well for pre-recorded content or you just 
focus on live stream uh, full chance? I, I use it for both. Yes. I do use it for pre-recorded content as well. Yep, the same here. Yeah, now, that, you yeah. do know you do know that a lot of folks uh, will go after the recorded, right? They'll go and put into a software edit. Uh, share with us your, your workflow, right? Um, how do you plan for a show? And then after you record the show, do you do anything or just go ahead and upload it? What's your process, Fulgence? For me, for me, uh, the purpose of using Ecamm Live for pre-recorded content for me was to eliminate the use of SD cards and cameras, right? And I, I, I went through this experience during Vlogmas and it wasn't only for Vlogmas, but it was like a very busy time. This was like the holidays. And there was a local church that uh, wanted uh, me to produce this holiday gospel concert for them. And I went through five SD cards, JP, and I was just so oh, burnt boy. out. And then, you know, when I just learned that I can literally just record this thing into Ecamm Live and it creates this high-end recording for me, this file, and I could just drop that in my um, video editing software. I can uh -huh. chop it if, I, if need be. That is just the best thing over ever. And sometimes when you're in Ecamm, you know, you have your overlays and you have your graphics and everything like that. There's no right. need to basically go and do the, 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 the post-production because you already filmed and recorded the entire production right there on the spot. So that is the beauty of Ecamm Live, at least for me, when it comes to pre-recorded content. What about you, Anna? Do you do anything or you just upload it straight to uh, social media, online, YouTube and all that? Because you have your YouTube channel. Do you use it at all for that anymore? Actually, yes, I do uh, pre-record content for customers and also for Ecamm, for Ecamm Live when we're recording tutorials. I do, um, sometimes I do plan the show. So I do, okay, which scenes are going to go here? What am I going to say in this specific scene? So I, the, mm -hmm. the workflow is planned. And then um, if I'm going to shoot to post, I plan for that. If I'm going, if I'm going to record to edit after, I I record for that. So it's mm. I, I keep in mind what it is that I'm going to do. I love music. Like everything that I do, the, from inspiration to the end, is inspired by music. So when I want to use specific piece of the song, specific part of the song, I pre-record and then I bring it into Final Cut so that I can do the mix in there, which is something mm -hmm. that as of yet, I haven't been able to do with Ecamm, oh, but okay. it's, yeah. So that's, that's, I do it for both purposes. It's, nice. it's so, it's fun. You just have to plan your content and, and then it will work for you. Be intentional in the way you're recording it and, and that it will make your life a whole lot easier. Appreciate that. Now we're about to go to a ad break and when we come back now, we're about to discuss about this live engagement, how to engage with your live audience, right? Um, how to make sure you're not boring, right? What can you do uh, to make it more interesting if you're not that, you know, happy super happy or outgoing type of person because your personality also matters uh we'll be back and talk about that and talk about chemistry we have a question for you guys <laughs> we'll be right back stay with okay. me <laughs> that was Hey man, this is DJ Strick and you're watching Content Creators University with JP High Tech. Man, don't miss a thing. Stay right here. Yes, yes, Welcome yes. To the show. <laughs> Good to be here, man. Good to be here. This is amazing, man. This space you've created, phenomenal, bro. Absolutely phenomenal. I'm excited to be here, man. Thank excited. You, sir. Content Creators University, man. Woo! Yes, sir. Here. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Welcome to the show, Lenita. <laughs> uh, what a pleasant surprise. Thank you for the welcome and for the amazing introduction.
the way business is done today is different from the way it was done pre pandemic. The content that you put out in any form, but now we're talking in the digital space, it should just be an overflow of the information, the insight or the knowledge that you already have on the inside of you because you consumed it. For you to be successful in your journey, you have to be an active participant in your journey. So I found my niche for that season of my life. And that niche was finding ways to take this and communicate it with other people's, which is kind of where creative communicators kind of came from. I'm gonna stop it. I'm gonna say that again, continually upgrade to the highest quality gear that you can comfortably afford. There's also truth to the statement that you get what you pay for. How can you become relevant? If you notice the smartest people, the wealthiest people, uh, the most achieved people and companies and industries and infrastructure in the world did not do it by themselves. You can never get to a certain level by yourself. And we need to understand and discern that the times we're in and the people that we're having on our journey. Because if I sit down and I share a video and it's impactful and it's powerful and the message resonates with somebody, and they share it with somebody else who is not in my circle. And then that person shares it with two, three people. And that person shares it with four or five people. And next thing you know, it went from the Americas to the UK down to the Bahamas. Then this transformational message, tool, information, or product has now gone beyond just sitting in either in my head or in my hands. And it's a lot more powerful than that. Powerful session, folks. Powerful session. That is the conference, right? The training is available now as a training on the website. All you have to do is go to jphitech.com forward slash CCU replay is available for uh, consuming today, right? Powerful things. Well, for the folks that just joined in us, we've been here with the power duo. I call them two professors today. We're talking about live audience engagement, and that is Anna and Fulgence. And we're about to talk about that right now. Let me go ahead and bring him back onto the stage, family. Thank you so much for uh, sharing with us your background and the reason that allowed you guys to make the decision you've made selecting the software for the live streams and how you ended up in this community and your journey as a content creator. Now, let's talk about um, actually building that database of content and um, building your audience and building the following, right? Uh, you guys have um, two YouTube channels. Channel, right between both of you guys there's two youtube channel and you're full-time pretty much i could say even though you do other things on the side you're really very present when it comes out to creating content and releasing that um and when you do that everybody wants a certain following right a certain success we should put it and in that success um there is some things key ingredients that needs to be present in order for that to take place which is engagement now, some people will tell you, Fulgence, that, oh, I'm not outgoing or, um, you know, I, I feel bored when it's just me and the camera or, you know, uh, I'm shy. That's why I do pre-recorded. You guys are doing live, which is harder. How do you put yourself in a position to connect with the public whenever you're on the live show and be yourself, Fulgence? How do you do it? Right. And uh, you you just answered my question, right? To, well, your question to me uh, is to be yourself, is to be authentic, right? And that's one of our uh, engagement tips and tricks is just to be your authentic self. If myself, I'm boring, I'm not outgoing, I am shy or this, that, and the third, right? There are going mm -hmm. to be people that are drawn to me because of those reasons, right? Mm -hmm. You know, so and and alicia we all know alicia way right and this is right. something that he said during the vlogmas and this sticks to me to this very day where he said your vibe attracts your tribe i i, I live by that your vibe attracts your tribe there will always that. be somebody that is drawn to you no matter what it can be with one person watching you on one on one day when you're on your first live to building your community of people who are drawn to somebody who is not outgoing, somebody who doesn't who's shy, somebody who doesn't get on with others. There will be people to come to your audience. There will be people to come and build your community that way. Hmm. Very powerful. Anna, how is it that? You don't worry. You dance sometimes on the show. You love music. You're so uh, natural and people love that. Have you always been like that in front of the camera? Is this something you've learned? Um, what is your secret sauce? <laughs> um, I'm just being myself, honestly. That's just like Fulgen said. I'm being myself. I, I am the same way that I am in camera. I am off camera. 
No, like exactly the same way. So um, is is I'm not gonna say it is easy. It's still clicking the live button. It's still kind of nerve wracking. But mm -hmm. at that point, I just remind myself: just be yourself. But just be yourself and deliver what you need to deliver, right? And then if I con when I concentrate on that, the nerves go down a little bit, and then my personality is allowed to come through and and just entertain i guess that's Impact right people. fantastic and, and also something very very important is that you know the the community people the community that you build right uh mm -hmm. you you're creating a safe space for them but they also create a safe space for you right they're here for a reason because you know they're drawn to you and you're drawn to them so you know they're here to support you they're not here to see you fail mm -hmm. right they want mm -hmm. to support you mm -hmm. they want to build you up they want to see you succeed and they want to see you become a better content creator Yes, that's hmm. very true. That is one thing that very powerful for us to think about. Thank you for that, right? Remembering that the people that are coming and showing up for you um, are there uh, to support you. They're not there against <laughs> you and thinking about that. Now, uh, engaging with the people, right? Um, how do we um, engage with them? Uh, do we just ask a question? How do you plan it? For example, right, um, Fulgence, whenever you have a title or a topic, do you plan the questions you're going to ask the, the the people that are going to show up on the live stream or do you just improvise? How do you do it? Right. It's a it's a combination of both. But primarily, yes, we do prepare uh, questions for the audience, uh, you know, in terms of like it can be a game, it can be an engagement question of the night and things of that nature. Right. But also uh, even more important is that we acknowledge the audience. Right. And uh, we we acknowledge them. So when they're coming in and, you know, they're in the chat, you know, we acknowledge them by their names. Uh, we make sure that we see their comment uh, and we're having a conversation. Right. This is it's like, you know, even though there's like a glass lens or a monitor that's like separating us too, but, you know, it's as if we're all in the same room together. Right. And it's again, it's like that community vibe that we love to build. And uh, and that really, really resonates well in the live streams. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. And and also, for example, when uh, for for people who are going for creators who are going live for the first time, or you know that they're doing the pre-recorded, but they're going live for the first time and they don't know their audience, for example, um, asking questions about uh, where where you are, where are you, getting to know your audience so that each and every time you have something more to talk about. Because once you get to know your your audience and your viewers, you know what kind of questions you can ask, you know what kind of games you can play with them, you know uh, how they're going to engage when you bring specific topic, what is good for them. So the engagement will go up because one, they trust you and know you and know your content, and then you know your audience. So the engagement will be great right you mm -hmm. start building like you know so you know what to expect from mm -hmm. them and they know what to expect from you mm -hmm. well like i said we have a special question for you because as you can see folks oh. <laughs> 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 oh boy oh my gosh we got so many questions about um, the drake album wait. jp we can't hear you I, I believe jp oh yeah jp we can hear you there we go. Sorry there about that. Was <laughs> I'm like, okay, folks, look right here. My man Fulgence, man. I'm like, wow, he's in paradise. If you look at these pictures, he's in paradise. I'm like, okay, something is happening here that we don't know about. So let me put it in full screen so we can see them and ask the question. Are you guys a couple? Where's this chemistry coming from? Anna, you tell us. Ladies first. <laughs> oh, ladies first now? <laughs> Um, well, actually, the chemistry was there be even before we were together. There's your answer. Yeah. And so yeah. um, it was already there. It, we worked well together because sometimes I will go overboard on something or we'll say something that and then he just follows through with it. And he just goes, hmm. like, OK, let's do this. And he supports me in the same way. When he comes, he's like, let's try this. I support him. And then we that way we just kind of like getting to know each other yeah. more and things like that. So the chemistry just continues. Yeah. Yeah. It's like we just, we're just able to balance each other out very, very well 
you know, um, in real life and also, uh, well, live streaming is real life anyway, but mm -hmm. you know, you mm -hmm. know what I mean, right? On, right, on camera, right. we balance each other very, very well. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and, and it's just, it's just like anything, any relationship, right? Like it just takes time to, to build, right? Mm -hmm. we, like the building blocks. Right? So <laughs> there we go. Time. There we go. It takes See, time to build, that's right? the but, thing. That's the yes. thing because, um, I'm glad you said that. And that was going to be great segue to my next question because I was going to ask, I said, okay. It is hard enough to go live by yourself. Now you add a second person, you have to coordinate the questions a certain way so that both of you guys are not speaking at the same time or stepping over, stumbling over each other's words. Um, mm -hmm. And how do you plan that or um, how do you think about it? This is something we want to learn from you guys because there are some folks out there that want to have shows where it's two of them, both of them, uh, they may not necessarily live in the same room, but they're both on the same platform. How do you do that so that is a uh, you know smooth experience for both hosts on the show? Anna, <laughs> so uh, we plan the show. We plan the show. We we rehearse it. We uh, we have some strengths. Each, each and every both of us have some strengths so we piggyback on each other on that so there are some topics that come up that i know that he is stronger on that specific thing so mm -hmm. i you know i let him do his thing and the same thing for him he will let me do my thing sometimes we are strong on the same thing and we just at that point we know we just kind of take turns and this is something that happened as we kept going live mm -hmm. so it just developed and we are still getting our groove but yeah. it's, it's getting better and better because we're getting to know each other more in right. those terms and, and that also helps too on from a production standpoint right mm -hmm. so for instance anna is has been you know she has her own show officially unofficial and she interviews guests naturally and she's amazing at the, at what she does right i'm not mm -hmm. so experienced in that so in the for in the in, in the case of for instance enn when we have a guest on our show, you know, Anna, you see Anna taking the lead and in interviewing the guests and I can uh, be a, as a backup, you know, I'll throw in a question right. or two there, but you know, I can, at that time I can manage the, the comments and uh, you know, making sure that the audience remains engaged that way. And you know, they're being acknowledged while the interview is going on. So it is a really, really good balance. Nice, nice. Well, let me go ahead and give some shout outs to the folks in the comment section. First Lady Creed, thanks for being here. Charles Jackson, we appreciate you. Uh, Dunn Howard, thank you so much for being here. Hey to you as well. Uh, thank you for the comments and everything. Hey, Sammy, superstar. I know I put this hey. comments up earlier, uh, but we didn't give him some shout outs. I want to take the time and acknowledge their presence here. Uh, I know, right? Everything is fire with this fire duo. I appreciate that, <laughs> Charles. Uh, really, really cool. And Steve Worthy, was What's going on, brother? What's going on? Uh, yeah, they're in the building, and I'm very happy. And look at that. We have Dr. Elo. Dr. E. <laughs> you know, I love his name, Elo, right? It just it makes right. me think of, uh, you know, that, that, that wolf in the forest. Elo. <laughs> pretty cool uh thanks for being here folks thanks for being here and um that leads to the next question family because i am learning a lot from you guys understanding that you have to plan these things um and and acknowledging each other's strength and weaknesses at the same time mm -hmm. um and knowing that okay whenever it's your strength you should take the lead role right and also agreeing I see that's the thing, right? Not just yeah. acknowledge, but agreeing with your weaknesses and mm -hmm. knowing that it's not about you, but it's about the people that are receiving the content you're putting out. And they'll be better served when we lean into your strength in order to deliver uh, deliver the message. That is fantastic. Now, chemistry is a big deal whenever you have more than one person, even if it's just you and the public, right? You right. still need to build that chemistry. Um how are you guys, because you said, uh, Anna, earlier that the chemistry has always been there, right? You guys have always had a chemistry before anything else followed. Um, mm -hmm. What would you uh, say contributed to that great chemistry? Is it just taking the time out, spending time together, right? Uh, building that uh, complicity or what is it? We just want to learn from your experience. Yeah, so going... I like Fulgens mentioned, I have been in production before and I do my shows and I've been in front of the camera, behind the camera, all that good stuff. Then I 
effulgence when I saw him the first time I saw him. He is creating overlays. He's creating shows. Mm -hmm. He's talking about that. He mentioned on one of the uh, on one of his posts. Oh, I would like to be a CNN. Uh, mm. uh, produced for CNN or something like that. So we had a lot in common already before we mm. even met each other. So it was it was like that. I I I, I you know I did some research for him <laughs> and I see what he was going on before <laughs> we actually started <laughs> talking. Right? I'm like okay. And uh, so we have a lot in common behind it. And then it also helps out that he's really easy on the eyes. For me so that helps go. out there we go really nice. that there we helps go. Out the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> hey this is real right this is a real is. thing that we need to consider um yeah. yeah we're laughing about it but what you're saying is very true anna because understanding that you know when you choose somebody to be a co-host on a show and you didn't do any background work any foundational research and you realize that oh we don't have anything in common that right. can translate whenever you guys are on the show am i wrong yes. fulgens no no you're not you're not wrong at all. and then and and to take a few steps back to what you we were saying before like in terms of like the chemistry and acknowledging each other's strengths and weaknesses like you know to be co-host it's not a competition mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. it's like you really have to work together and balance each other out as we mentioned before in order to become like a well-oiled machine and the thing is like people will see right through that right people will see oh this is like a power struggle one's trying mm -hmm. to outdo the other and, you know and thankfully you know and we never have that issue we never will have that issue because you know we acknowledge that from the from the very start, you know. And as Anna said, like you know, we were drawn to each other's production backgrounds. I remember uh, that was December tenth when uh, you know it was one of our fellow um, community members, Lem Lem, had shared something in the Let's Get Live group. Um, officially on official TV is live right now. Go join the broadcast and see what's going on. And I said, oh. That's the, that's the same official on official TV that um, left a comment when I went live the, on my first day. I said, let me go check this out. And I saw not only this amazing woman before my eyes, but this the, the production was amazing. Right. I like, right. and I was like, that's like, I respect, I respect that. Like when I see amazing production, like you could just tell right away, like this is a fire production. Like, and I was just like, you know what? We need to hook up. We need to connect. We need to get things done. Like this is gonna work out perfect. Wow! And it did. <laughs> wow, that's amazing. I'm not gonna lie to you, folks. Talking about engagement and live things that happened on live earlier when Fulgence was speaking, I put it on full screen on him because there's a fly in my studio. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the fly just landed on my glasses, and I had to take off my glasses and fight with this fly. Real fast, and I'm like, oh man, he's done talking. Let me put it back. This is the beauty of life. <laughs> so, yes. I know you guys have to deal with that. How do you deal whenever you have a fly in the studio and you're live? What do you do, right. Fulgens? Right, and that's another one of the engagement tips Ex um, expect mishaps or mistakes. And in this case, expect a fly to come, right? <laughs> JP, mm -hmm. we were on ENN. This fly was on the monitors. It was in the softbox. <laughs> it climbed inside of the softbox and it was flying around inside the softbox. And we kept mentioning the fly on the show. Those guys, <laughs> the, the community just went wild, right? They started using puns and, you know, oh, let's see what all the buzz is about. And, you know, uh, Ecamm Live has the animations fly in from the left, fly in from the right. This thing just, just went on. And then, and then the, con the, the conversation continued on the building block show at 8 30 and, hmm. and and we created overlays about the fly and everything <laughs> it, this thing just just took a life of its own but it just created really really fun engagement you know we just it's Dang. like you know what was it like uh make turn lemonade make lemonades out with with lemon right that's what it was <laughs> right. it, it, it just went on for days it went on for days in the community and in and in, in even Fulgens went on and got a what is it oh uh so you know keith pelzer he introduced us to what's called this bug assault rifle like this the rifle where you put the salt and you could shoot uh insects with it and flies with it so so really you know that cured became a conversation so i ended up getting one and then we posted that in the group and then that created even more conversation this thing yeah. this thing <laughs> went viral it did. It did. see folks yeah. it's all about enjoying what you're doing and mm -hmm. making it 
part integral of the conversation as natural as possible. Honestly, mm -hmm. this fly has been here in full Jensen and Anakin <laughs> attest. It's been here before we went live. And I was hoping that this fly will leave me alone. And um, if you want to see this fly or see how I'm feeling, <laughs> just watch the video, folks. I mean, this is insane. This fly will not leave me. It's right here again in front of my microphone. Yes. And I just got to ignore it and keep the conversation going, hoping that the black cover of my mic is not going right. to reveal this fly. And if you want to pick pixel people later, you can do it. But that's the reality. Now, tips, tips, tips. Um, you guys had an event, right? And you traveled and you were doing live outdoors. As a matter of fact, let me go ahead and put this on right here. And um, it is not easy to go live, but it's even harder to go live outside of a non-controlled environment, meaning outdoors. Um, and you guys did a phenomenal job going live outdoors. Can you share with us what gear did you use? How were you able to put this together so that it was so seamless, right? It was really professionally done um, so we can learn from that um, enclosure here. Yes, Focus. yes, yes. Uh, you know, so first of all, this was an amazing experience mm -hmm. right here, right? Um, Ecamm, they brought the, the booth, so we didn't have to bring that, right? And we're, of course, we're standing up, which helps with keep up with the energy and whatnot. Uh, the gear that we're using here, uh, we're using a 16-inch MacBook Pro. We also mm -hmm. had the 32-key the, the, uh, stream deck, uh, the Rodecaster Pro. And uh, normally we'd use a, a CalDigit. But, you know, we used all the ports and just plugged everything in the ports using the, um, you know, USB to USB-C adapters. This way we could just like uh, um, have less things on the desk. Right. And we had uh, two wired mics, which is the ATR 2100X microphones. And uh, Ecamm brought a wireless microphone receiver with uh, two wireless microphones that we're, that's, you see in the, in the photo there. And mm -hmm. those were connected to the Rodecaster Pro as well. So for the camera, we're using a Sony A6600 with a 16 uh, Sigma 16. And we had two uh, soft lights. These were, uh, it's called a brand called Relino. So they were two Relino video soft lights and, uh, you know, and they go up to 5,600 Kelvin. Uh, we just had two on, on, any, on each end, but we had so much uh, daylight because it was like a, this kind of like a sky dome in that hotel. So, okay. you know, that natural lighting came in and it was very, very helpful. There were some times like as, like like this one, like where the sun just comes and just starts come beaming down. But right. other than that, the lighting was excellent. And uh, we, we made very little use of those uh, those those video lights. Soft boxes. Mm -hmm. Now, mm -hmm. quick question, um, because usually outdoor, some people will tell you, you might use like an ND filter. Did you put any ND at all in front of the lens or was just native? N no, there was no ND filter. Thankfully, the lighting in that um, in that area was like really, really good. Unless when the sun came in beaming down on us, like the lighting was really good. The lighting yeah, was good. The, yeah. The, the one thing where the lighting, uh, as you see in the background, uh, it was it was blown out so yeah. what we did is that we exposed for the background mm -hmm. so that it can be nicely it is not blown out and then mm -hmm. the light in the front of us then lit our faces yeah so it was it was really nice but in in terms of uh producing outdoors it will be it's, it's almost the same i would say the only thing is the lighting in the environment but when you work together for example you have your partner the it's your co-host mm -hmm. you're bringing the same thing to an outdoor event, to yeah. an outdoor production. So you right. know what your strengths are, you know where you're gonna do, you know how you're gonna split, you know that the goal is we need to be live at the specific time, let's do our thing. So we go on, we do it. Uh, if we encounter any mishaps, which definitely happens, you have to count on that. You have to actually leave room in your calendar, in your, right. in your, in your workflow, <laughs> that something is going to happen. Mm -hmm. And that is if the show starts at 11, you start prepping at eight. So you can leave that one gap for something that happens so you can start on time. Mm -hmm. And so lessons learned for us, it was it was just like that. We can keep keep getting stronger. Um, we have uh, we brought um, additional uh, equipment mm -hmm. just in case, just in you case, know, something yeah. happened. We didn't use it, but um, there was an outlet that wasn't working that was next to us. So we're like, oh, my gosh. But then again, mm. we had the time. 
right? We have the time. Yeah. So we had time to go talk to the management and say, right. hey, can you give us another outlet? They came over, they they fixed it up, yeah. they gave us another outlet, we were able to move on. So it's just giving yourself that time being prepped and trusting your partner that they know. Like, for example, for Fulgens, I trusted him and his signing, he trusted me on the things that I needed to do. Mm -hmm. And so we were able to have a great, great, great production yes. for Ecamm, because we were representing Ecamm Live, and for people of video, because that's where we were. Yeah. Uh, and then also the learning experience. So like mm -hmm. on day one, you know, we had a few little mishaps, like again, mi expect mishaps, right? So uh, right. there were some instances like where we were muted, right? But then we learn from that and then you just adapt really quickly, mm -hmm. right? So day two, hmm. flawless, Life, right. flawless right. day two. Yeah, yes. we even had time for coffee day too. Yes, we yeah, had time for coffee day too. And we, and we woke up at the same time, we planned everything, but everything was great. And yeah. then on day two, the only thing was, you know, they, they go, okay, you need to move. You need yes. because there's a wedding. You need to be out of here by this time. And our interview was an, uh, an hour after. So we had to move the setup. So at that point, Fulgens trusted me with like, okay, go ahead and do what you have to do. And then I trust the Fulgens, okay, let's move all of the equipment yeah. and come here. So we just mm. did it transparently that people didn't even know. They just, right. they just right. found out when we moved to the yeah. place. And it was a completely different studio, <laughs> completely different look for the show yeah. on the wow. same day. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So it's like expected. And we did that in like, half an hour or, or less than half an hour and then we had some of the team there uh sammy was there helping us out yeah, and sammy. we had a few people there helping us move some items katie was there also you know so we had the team there and like we just took care of it in <laughs> less than half an hour it was an amazing yeah, experience we actually, sure. were, we actually were able to we actually finished before the, the time that we yeah, needed to go we live, did we did right? yeah it, yeah it was an amazing experience mm -hmm. awesome just, man see that's the thing right uh giving yourself enough time to mm -hmm. plan and be ready before the show don't give yourself 30 minutes uh oh because things happen um mm -hmm. and you will not have enough time before you hit the live so thank you so much folks for this amazing show i want to thank you guys and looking here we can connect with you guys on youtube and instagram i've been showing it throughout the show for the folks who are listening on youtube is building blocks all in one word um and officially unofficial so officially dash unofficial on youtube as well same thing for instagram right instagram you have anna and fulgence a n a and a n d fulgence f u l j e n s look for them on instagram officially unofficial also on instagram folks thank you so much for an amazing show i want to thank you for your time what I want to ask you to do is hang backstage as I go ahead and close with the team here, and I'll be right back with you guys. Okay. Thank you. All right, folks, this is it. As you can see, this is the Content Creators University. I love today's show, right? So engaging. And we were talking about live engagement, right? We talked about flies, <laughs> and the fly is still here. Um, but again, it was just an amazing show. And this is what we do every single week. If you appreciate this type of videos, go ahead and smack the like button on the bottom there. Put a comment in the comment section. Let me know how you like it and share it with a friend or family member that is struggling with how to build engagement, right, with their audience. A lot of knowledge and wisdom was shared in this video, and this is what we do every single week. I'll see you again next week for another video. You be safe, like I always say. Shalom. Bye-bye, guys.